is talking here? God. Who plays the cause? God. Who is defending it? God. Oh God. Go on in verse 2. Go on in that same verse. Put the same scripture. He said. Shall be taken in sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. Lest anyone finding him should kill him. The only man on earth. That have physical antidote against death. God place a mark. And say from today. No man shall touch you. Go on to the next verse. Did you think it just ended there? Go on to the next verse. I came went from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod and in the east of Edom. He was in the east of Edom. Now here, Cain knew his wife. He did marriage. He's somebody who is caused married. Now, leave it. He got married and he conceived. The wife became pregnant. The wife was not even barren. <laughs> and she bare Enoch. And he built a city. He didn't build a house. He didn't build mansion. He didn't build estate, a city. <laughs> Abuja is a city. Ken, a man that was under a curse because the mark of God, the anointing of God was upon his head. Now leave it there, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. He said, and he built a city after the name of his son, meaning that the words of Cain had a successor that the son took over. There was a continuity of that word. If Cain can make it, I will make it. If Cain make it, I will make it. I don't know what they have said. Who placed the cause upon your head after the end of this service? That curse is over. That curse is over. That curse is over. I hear no more curse. Hear this. That's why I know ancestral curse can be broken. That's why I know generational curse can be broken. If God placed the curse and God broke the curse, which witch can place the curse that cannot be broken? Whose native doctor can place a curse that can never be broken? Who said you can't get married? Who said you can't get a job? Who said you can't get to that position? Who said so? Every curse of near success syndrome, I break that that amen is not louder shout it like thunder sit down now the mark of God is called the anointing and the anointing is an announcer the anointing is an an it's a flavor, a savour that changes a man's smell in destiny. The anointing is got from a Hebrew word called Meshach. And Meshach means to rob. Meshach, Meshach means to rob, to spray. The anointing is gotten from an Hebrew word meaning Meshach. Jesus Christ is first called Jesus after he was baptized and the dove appeared and rested upon his head he was called Jesus Christ and Christ means the anointed Acts 11 26 said they were first called Christians in Antioch meaning anointed people if you take the anointing from Christianity you have taken the presence of God from Christianity the anointing is a spiritual electrolysis that is connected to, a, to the body of a believer from a spiritual kanji down that makes the believer supply light. In other words, Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. You cannot become a light until the anointing is deposited inside you. I prophesy, there is an anointing that is about to make you a naked wire. The Bible said five times, thou shall not touch the anointed. Five times. Five times. Touch not my anointed. 
and do my prophet no harm five times five good times the bible say touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm philippians chapter 4 verse 13 said i can do all things through christ that strengthens me i can do all things through christ which which strengthens me let me paraphrase it i can do all things through the anointing that strengthens which strengthens me the anointing is not a personality for say it is a movement of the flow of spiritual liquid he said which strengthens me can i say this through the anointing you can do all things all 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 things the anointing the anointing the anointing the great big big Graham was holding a meeting and the power of God was moving so evidentially. And a man walked to the meeting. Billy Graham will walk to people, call their name, their last name, their first name with great precision and prophecy. And a man walked to Billy Graham in the meeting and said, I got cancer. And Billy Graham looked at the man and said, no, you don't have cancer. You just came to mock my anointing. You came to pretend as if you have cancer to test the authenticity of my anointing. For that purpose, go with cancer. On that seven days, the guy was dis the diagnosed cancer. They discovered cancer. The seventh day, he died. I'm talking about men with this kind of collapse dangerous level of anointing now the anointing is in three dimensions and it comes upon us in three dimensions the anointing that is with us the anointing that work in us the anointing that comes upon us now let me explain the anointing with us is the saving anointing that convicts us why we are believe, unbelievers. That anointing protects us, it's always with us. God brought them out of Egypt and led them with a pillar of fire by night and pillar of cloud by day. The anointing was with them, guiding them. That anointing necessarily leads you to a point of safety. That anointing is the one that convinces you when the preacher preaches that this preacher is a man of God or not a man of God, or that help the message of salvation to come through in you. Now, the other anointing is the anointing in us. That one that works inside us is the anointing that saves us, is the anointing that abides in us is the anointing that is always with us when we sleep is with us when we operate is with us when we walk is with us when we talk the anointing is always with us so that anointing can be on a preacher and you will not see it when he's at home because he's inside then the third level of the anointing is the anointing that come upon us the one that come upon us operate on us for service it comes upon us for example as i am talking now i can still be operating with the anointing inside there is a time that we come in this service that when the hand of God comes upon me, you begin to see the overflow of the anointing. That's why in the Bible said, in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, from verse 1, that word, that when the days of Pentecost was fully come, that the disciples were all gathered in one accord, and suddenly there appeared clothing of tongue of fire. It appeared and sat upon their head. That anointing comes upon it comes what upon so when that anointing comes upon you you can't hold yourself am i am i teaching you are you getting what i'm saying 
Are you getting what I'm saying? It's the anointing. It's the anointing. It comes. For example, I give this brother this stick. This one, I've given him the handkerchief. Now, I put the anointing upon me and I drop upon him. What, what is going on? Just watch. Watch what is going on with him. The anointing has come upon the mantle. The anointing, leave him. The anointing has come upon the mantle. He can't hold the mantle. The first time I gave him, I gave him as an ordinary man. But the second time I gave the anointing, I gave him as a man in the office of the prophet operating on the anointing that is upon me. You're not getting me. You're not getting me. Come. Come. You don't understand. If we are always operating with the anointing upon us, that will become like a public nuisance. You understand? So, it is very possible for me to shake you. You don't feel anything. It doesn't mean the anointing is not present. But if I want to make you feel the anointing, poof, I, I put it on you. Because I want to make you feel the anointing. You don't get me. You are not getting me. Are you getting what I'm saying? That you shake a man of God and don't feel electrolysis flowing doesn't mean that something has not entered. It simply means that the man of God is dealing with you in a low key. You are not getting me. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? It is the anointing that comes upon us that we use to, for service. We use for oppression. He said, for the spirit of the Lord God has anointed me to proclaim, to proclaim, to proclaim liberty to the captive. Can I prophesy? Can I prophesy? Can I prophesy? I see the anointing coming upon you. I did not like the way you are shouting the amen. Shout the amen like thunder. 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 The, like thunder. the disciples were anointed three times. They were anointed in Acts chapter 2. And that anointing made men to be amazed. The second time they were anointed, the anointing made men to be threatened. The third time they were anointed, the anointing made them to have dominion. In Acts chapter 4, we saw the anointing. Then we saw, we saw the anointing. In Acts chapter 5, we saw another level of anointing upon brother, upon Peter, when he said to Ananias and Sapphira, you lied, you lied, you lied. For this same reason, the grace of God came down, strike them to death. That's another level of anointing. Matosi brother, I profess Matarabado Shitaba Suprekata Prade Kusi Teleba Makadaba Matribolo Bodisikaba. See now, the Jeffreys, there were two brothers, Stephen Jeffrey and George Jeffrey, highly anointed brothers. It is said that they will enter a meeting in their lifetime when they were alive and they will begin to talk that new eyes will appear on the pops of people that never had eyes, that legs will grow fresh. These guys were dangerously anointed, Stephen Jeffrey and George Jeffrey. And Renard Bonke had an encounter with George Jeffrey before George Jeffrey died. He said he went to George Jeffrey's house. The man was very old and insisted, I want to see him. And the maid and the house help said, I you can't see this man. And he said, the man just came out from the bedroom and walked as an old man and said, leave him. Man of God, you want to see me? Say yes. And he said, John Jeffrey came down and touched him on the head. And that was all. John Jeffrey came down, touched him on the head. And after touching him on the head, he went back to the bedroom and the next day he died that was a trans 
he never said anything to Rena Bonke. He came down after saying, you want to see me, man of God? He said, yes. And as soon as George Jeffrey got to him, George Jeffrey, Rena Bonke said, he knelt down. George Jeffrey placed his hands upon his head and released the grace and left and went to the bedroom and slept. And the next day, he heard that George Jeffrey, that he's already there. Why? Because the transference of this kind of terrific, dangerous anointing, it is called an high tension Pentecostal naked wire. The kind of anointing that witches see they are afraid. The kind of anointing that demons see they are afraid. The kind of anointing that carry audacity, that carry propensity, that carry temperature, that carry an high level of electrolysis. The kind of anointing that is highly corrosive acidic that is an high tension anointing it is not just an anointing you can buy in the market payata 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 when he was given he was given a testimony of sit down of Kentry Kuma, a woman with a with a grace of the oil. He said they were they traveled from a long distance and they brought a crippled woman that was twisted both hand every part of the body twisted. The deformity was so high, not just only crippled, the whole body were twisted. He said. I followed them to carry the crippled woman into the meeting where Kentry Kuma, she was ministering. She said, he said, Benahim said, I was there. It was not that they told me I was there. He said, why? Sister Kentry Kuma, of blessed memory, when she was ministering, the grace dropped on her. And the power of God literally fell on this woman, twisted. The legs that were twisted return it back. The mouth that were twisted return it back. Every part of the body that were twisted was returned back. And the woman stood up. He said, in that very meeting, he was jumping like a baby screaming because he was an evidence to the crippled woman. He said, why the woman stood up and was rejoicing? And uh, she said, woman of God, there is still one thing yet. Said my hands, one part of the finger were not twisted back. And she was screaming. And Kentry Kuma replied and said, honey, the Lord left the twisted part of the hand just to remember you that once the whole of your body were twisted, that that is an evidence that I return all your body. Am I talking to somebody here? I'm talking about people who have corrosive acidic anointing. 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 Smith Wugeswa, great man with an high level tension oil. It was said in his meeting that a dead body was brought to his meeting and the man was dead. The guy had to start blowing the dead man. Blow the dead man. Blow the dead man. Blow it until he slapped the face and the dead man came back to life. Am I talking to somebody here? I am talking about high tension Pentecostal anointing. We are in the days of power. Am I talking to somebody here? You are about to enter a level where no power can stop you. Where no demon can stop you. Where no spirit can stop you. I see the anointing coming upon your life. The way you are shouting the amen is looking for my trouble. Shout the amen like thunder. The Bible said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, 
Neither has he come to the imagination of the heart of men what the Lord is about to do. Some people say we have great men of God in Africa, in the world. And I said, we don't have great men of God. That there are a generation that is coming, that is about to change the calendar. Like what Apostle Baba Lola did. We are coming from the back because the Bible said, the present glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. Am I talking to champions generation here? There is a generation that we carry fire, that we carry an high tension power, that the world can't stop, that when demons see us, they run. When power see us, they run. Am I talking to somebody here? If you are there, shut fire. Lift up your leg and shut fire. Yeah. 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 After today, the anointing of God the anointing of God that was upon David. The Bible said David was anointed in the midst of his brethren. That anointing is about to come upon you. In the midst of your brethren, you shall carry power. In the midst of your brethren, you shall carry fire. In the midst of your people, you shall carry power. Those who say you cannot become anything, my God is about to anoint you. I might talk in here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? here why you lift up your hands and check the anointing like thunder check it like thunder check it like thunder check it like thunder someone shot fire I prophesy there is an anointing that comes upon your head that change things around you there is an anointing that comes upon your life and bring your enemy to your footstool today that anointing that was upon David that killed Goliath is coming upon your life check it like thunder check it like thunder somebody shot fire shot fire shot fire yeah, 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 yeah. you dare lift up your hands i release the anointed like thunder like thunder check it like thunder check it 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 whatever they have taken away from you am i talking here you come here come here come here come there is an anointing that makes everything around your life like thunder summer shot fire shot fire I am here like a Pentecostal naked wire. You touch me by mistake, you die by correction. You are an high tension wire. What stop your father can't stop you. What stop your mother can't stop you. Those of you here, bind your hands. I feel the anointed. Can ushers be behind them? In the name of Jesus, I prophesy. One, two, three, take it. I prophesy, check the anointing, check the anointing like fire. Whatever they have done against your life, I don't know what they have done against your father. What have they done against your mother? What have they done against your destiny? I hear freedom. I hear freedom. I hear freedom. I hear freedom. Hey! Hey! Somebody say Ororo. Hey! Hey! The Bible speaking. If that same spirit that resurrected Christ Jesus leave it in your mortal body, it shall quicken your mortal body to do the works of God. I prophesy, whatever stop your father will not stop you. Somebody looked at me. Said you shout when you are preaching. I said it's true. God has gentle preachers. He knows there are some problems that gentle preacher will whisper. He knows there are some stubborn problems that will not go. That's why he raised me a born Muslim from a barrack foundation with a garagara anointing. 
because right from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violent, and the violent man shall take it by force. Take your position by force. Take your mandate by force. Take your healing by force. Take your glory by force. Take your anointing by force. Shout that name and fire. something about this anointing they can't stop you you're not hearing me they can't stop you it's it's a grace a grace grace when it enters you some people think you are running mental there's something that happens. It enters you and fuel you. Something is entering here now. <laughs> I have seen miracles. I have spoken to a cat, a living cat, and in less than eight hours, the cat died. I've seen miracles. Know it. I've seen miracles. I've seen miracles. I've seen dead body come to life. I see dead children come to life. Madaya Sita. I told you I was in a business class and a man was disturbing me too much. I was to study. I was to be here to minister. The, the man was disturbing me all through. And I just touched him by the palm and I said, sleep. And that was all. He started snoring. And I said, Holy Ghost, I didn't have snoring to be part of it. And then the thing came down. There is a grace. They are anointed. God is raising some of us to humiliate some people. We don't look like it, but there's something in us. There is something like a tsunami invading your destiny. This kind of anointing. No, no. The day I discovered the grace of God upon my life, I knew I can never be poor. I don't pray to. I don't pray for money. No. Why should I pray for money? It comes. How can I carry an ocean of oil and be praying for money? I don't pray. I don't pray. It just comes like that. In less than. In less than 13 months, no pressure from anywhere we landed here. In less than 13 months, phew, no pressure. No pressure. No one single individual can boast. No. When God is in the business of putting the oil, the anointing also bring wealth. <laughs> oh, you don't get me well. I open you up.